turn now to the West Bank, to another doctor, to Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, physician, member of the Palestinian parliament, head of the Palestinian Medical Relief Society, who's been leading efforts to manage the pandemic in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, when we last spoke to you, uh, Dr. Barghouti, you had COVID-19. Uh, more recently, you were at the Al-Aqsa Mosque when the Israeli forces began their raid. Um, uh, you have said that Palestinian first responders were attacked and beaten as they tried to help the wounded. Um, if you can talk about just what one asked Dr. Rasha as you oversee both Gaza and West Bank when it comes to um, COVID, but the attacking of the medical facilities, the killings of the doctors, um, and the significance of all this. Of course, you are a major political figure as well. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, says they will not stop the bombing. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. And uh, uh, let me say that our hearts are broken, really, with uh, what we see in Gaza, uh, especially the loss of our colleagues in the hospital. Uh, but what, has, what is happening, really, is an act of genocide. It's not just bombardment. It's not just barbaric attack on the civilian population. In reality, Netanyahu has failed drastically. He does not have any military success. And I am telling you, he does not have even military targets. This man and his government is uh, using Palestinian blood and maybe even Israeli blood to stay in power, to evade uh, the three cases of corruption that he has to face. And he's doing anything to keep his seat. Uh, but what's happening in Gaza is totally unacceptable. And by the way, the 213 people killed there, you have to add to them 25 Palestinians who were also killed in the West Bank during the last week. Uh, there are 1,400 injuries, serious injuries in Gaza, but also in addition to that, there are 3,000 injuries in the West Bank. And uh, while we are talking, the army is still shooting people here in Ramallah and in Hebron and in Bethlehem. And uh, some of them are uh, at high risk because they were shot with high-velocity bullets. Uh, what happened in Gaza, most important, it's very important to mention that the Israeli army uh, eliminated 14 families completely. I mean, they killed the grandfather, the grandmother, the father, the mother, and all the children. 14 families have been eliminated from the civil record. This is, this is so horrible. And out of these 14 families, one child only stayed alive. A two-month-old child who lost nine of his brothers and sisters, as well as his mother and father. What future is going to be for this child? This is what worries me most. The other thing I want to mention is that besides bombardment and destruction of people's homes, and there is no justification whatsoever for destroying eight high-rise high buildings by the Israeli bombs, which are American-made. There is no justification of shooting people's homes and destroying them completely while people are asleep, knowing that Gaza does not have civil defense equipment, knowing that Gaza, since, 19, since 2006, is under siege for 15 years, and the equipment that the civil defense has goes back to 1996. So not only you bombard people and people are stuck below the rubble. Imagine, imagine the feelings of, of, of a person who's hearing the so voice of a child or a, a mother or a man under the rubble, and you cannot reach out to him, and he just suffocates to death. This is the worst that can happen. In other countries, when an earthquake happens, people rush to help. Other countries rush to help. What do we have from other countries today except statements that Israel has the right to defend itself. Defend itself? It is the country that is occupying us. It is the, it is the entity that is practicing apartheid against the Palestinian people. You can't even equate between the two sides. Not, and, and, you are not, and, and they are not only doing that, they are favoring Israel, the aggressor. Let me also tell you something about what's happening in Gaza. We receive calls all the time from mothers, fathers, and we have our colleagues there who are working on the ground. The worst thing is the psychological stress that is exercised against the children. Bombardment after bombardment the whole night. What you see in Gaza against the Palestinian population, but especially against the Palestinian children, is psychological terror. 
I call it psychological terror that Netanyahu and his government are practicing against the people. And while we were busy trying to stop the COVID-19 epidemic, which has reached a serious level in Gaza, because the ratio of infection is 30 percent, which means that out of every 100 tests you do, you have 30 cases of COVID-19. That means you have a community spread, a dangerous one. And now we cannot do anything, because tests cannot be done. Vaccines are not available. As you know, Israel practiced the, what I call vaccination apartheid against the Palestinian people. They got themselves vaccines enough for all Israelis, and they gave nothing to Palestinians. And they watched us getting the disease, actually, both in West Bank and Gaza. Now Gaza has shortage of vaccines and cannot provide the vaccines, even the ones that they have, because of, uh, of, of blocking of health care, because of the bombardment. And now they've lost the only lab uh, that, 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 that does tests for COVID-19. Our teams in medical relief, which are present everywhere in Gaza, have now to shift from dealing with COVID-19 to providing care to the injured people who cannot stay in hospitals because of the number of injuries, and they have to be treated at home. So our teams have to go now and treat the injured. And our other teams have to go now to the UNRWA, uh, schools where there 45,000 people have been displaced from their homes under apartments, the conditions, they need blankets, they need food, they need water, they need everything. So it's a combination of problems that we have to face because of this terrible, terrible massacre that Israel is conducting, and there is no justification for that. The whole thing started because Israel attacked we have worshippers, peaceful worshippers, who were just praying in the Aqsa Mosque. I was there. I saw them attacking not only the prayer, the, the worshippers. They even attacked the first aid providers and beat them. We had 1,000 injuries in Jerusalem because of Israeli army attacks. Six of them have lost their eyes because of the injuries. And then on top of that, they want to ethnically cleanse the, the Sheikh Jarrah area. I want to explain to you, there are 500 people several families in Sheikh Jarrah who have been living there since the 50s. And these families were placed in Sheikh Jarrah because they were ethnically cleansed in 1948 by Israel. These people came from Jaffa, from Ramle, from Lod, from West Jerusalem, because the Israeli army forced them out. And now the army comes to their homes and wants to evict them one more time and ethnically cleanse them to replace them with whom? With illegal settlers who are supported by the Israeli government. This is the worst system of apartheid. This is not only military occupation. This is a combination of occupation, settler colonial uh, system, and a system of the worst kind of apartheid that humanity has ever seen, much worse than the apartheid that prevailed in South Africa at one point of time. And this has to stop. This has to stop. That's why I'm very proud to say today, I'm very proud to say that today, the Palestinian people, all the Palestinian people, people in 48 areas in what they call Israel, people in the West Bank and Gaza and East Jerusalem, people in the, people in the diaspora, all Palestinians for the first time maybe since, for, since 1948 are all unified and united in one struggle. One struggle to end the suffering, one struggle to end occupation, one struggle to get rid of the system of apartheid that has lasted longer than anybody should tolerate. And today what you see is a unified strike, unified demonstrations, unified people who, in my opinion, are going way ahead of their leaders. And their leaders must understand that and understand that it is time for unity and for a joint strategy of struggle for all Palestinians. And Dr. Barghouti, I wanted to ask you about the role of the United States and also of the other uh, Arab states uh, before this uh, this renewed crisis uh, here. Uh, the especially the the bombing, the, uh, the destruction of the high rise that where the Associated Press, Al Jazeera, and other news organizations were. Uh, Secretary of State Blinken uh, of the United States said yesterday that he has no evidence, he's seen no evidence uh, that this was being used by Hamas, yet the, Israel's, uh, the Israeli government continues to say it was. 
uh, yet the administration says nothing about the attacks on the press that have resulted here. I'm wondering your sense of where the Biden administration is right now and what it should be doing, and also the deafening silence uh, from the uh, other Arab states at this time. Well, first of all, uh, let me say that, uh, of course, anything after Trump looks better, uh, because Trump was the worst ever, not only leader of the United States, the worst ever president anywhere in the world. That man tried to completely liquidate the Palestinian issue. And he uh, abused also many Arab countries to enter into normalization relationship with the apartheid system in Israel. Uh, but Biden administration is not doing much better. This commitment to the alliance with Israel and this complete bias to Israel is unacceptable. I do not understand when Mr. Blinken and even Mr. Biden keeps talking about Israel's right to defend itself and does not mention a word about the right of the Palestinians to resist occupation and resist apartheid and to defend themselves as well. This, this asymmetry, this uh, unacceptable behavior is encouraging Israel. When the United, I don't understand why the United States three times blocked the possibility of a statement or a resolution by the Security Council to call for ceasefire. Why? Just because Israel wants that. We do not understand how, how could the administration dare to sign a new agreement about sending more bombs to Israel, more rockets to Israel, while it is committing this war crime against the Palestinian people. Because what's happening in Gaza is nothing but a war crime, a war crime against humanity. We do not understand why Mr. Biden does not listen to the good people in the Democratic Party, people like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and Cortez and Bernie Sanders, who are saying enough is enough. And why should the United States continue to protect occupation? Why should it continue to protect a system of apartheid? This is totally unacceptable, and this has to change. It, it shocked us that Mr. Biden has changed the policy on many issues has liberated the American administrations from the cages that Trump put them in regarding World Health Organization or the issue of environment or the issue of Mexico or relationship to European countries. But when it came to Palestine, they remained in the cage. And they even, they even praised the normalization agreements, which are misleading, uh, and consider them great effort by Trump's administration. This has to change. The United States has to stop doing that and has to be fair, and they have to accept our right as Palestinians to be free, as Palestinians to be free from occupation and from the system of Israeli apartheid. This, will, by the way, will be good for everybody in this region and not just for Palestinians. Regarding Arab countries, we are, we are not happy and we are disappointed because up to now, the Arab countries are not doing what they should do. And then we are not asking them to fight Israel, but we are asking them at least to stop having normalization with this system of apartheid and of occupation. To cut the relationship till Israel stops this oppression of the Palestinian people. We think they should do much more. Of course, we cannot put them all in one basket because some countries are really doing a good job. Some others are not doing enough. But I know one thing, that the peoples of the Arab world are all on the side of the Palestinian people. That's what we have seen in huge demonstrations, hundreds of thousands in Yemen, in Iraq, in Tunisia, in Morocco, and in so many, and most, and most important, in Jordan and Lebanon, where people in Jordan tried in every possible way to reach to us. So I think there is a great, a great discrepancy, a great uh, difference here between the positions of the peoples of these countries and the positions of the governments. Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, we want to thank you for being with us, physician, member of the Palestinian parliament, head of the Palestinian Medical Relief Society, speaking to us from Ramallah in the West Bank. Next up, we go to Jerusalem to speak to the head of the human rights group, Betsalem. موطني موطني آه الجلال والجمال والسناء والبهاء في رباك في رباك 
والحياة والنجاة والهناء والرجاء في هواك في هواك هل أراك هل أراك سالما مناما Martina Voco by Mahara Saf. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As the Palestinian death toll in Gaza tops 213, the leading Israeli human rights group, B'Tselem, is accusing Israel of committing war crimes by killing blockaded civilians and destroying infrastructure on a massive scale. On Monday, I got a chance to speak with Haggai Elad in Jerusalem.